Hello and welcome to New York Crypto Talk. Today's project review is on a recently ended ICO. So my question for you is what has raised $117 million, was the highest earning ICO of 2018 and has already gained over 40 clients looking to use their service? Well, if you answered Puma Pay because you can read the screen, then you are correct. So what is Puma Pay? Well, Puma Pay is a pull payment protocol. It is basically a billing platform on the blockchain. It is looking to solve some traditional issues that we normally take for granted in normal day life and use that same kind of technology within the blockchain. So if you think about a traditional cryptocurrency payment, what normally happens is you're paying for a transaction through a push method. Basically, you're sending a transaction to a recipient. What the pull method is looking to do is allow concurrent payments to occur and multiple other ways of being able to invoice individuals through what would traditionally be done through a credit card processing system that is currently used today. So think about this as a business to consumer billing process simplified on the blockchain. So here's just an example of a pull versus a push payment method and how it works in the traditional sense of it. And that is what Puma Pay is looking to do. They are trying to simplify what billing and cryptocurrency is currently lacking within the blockchain and be able to utilize their pull payment protocol to be able to solve how transactions usually work by enabling merchants to pull funds from customer accounts. Puma Pay claims that their protocol will avoid the high transaction costs. It will be a, a commission-free platform that will reduce the insecurity of chargebacks, basically reverse transactions. A chargeback is very common in traditional payment methods, and there's usually associated fines with it. They also want to be able to eliminate the need for a middleman. So these are, when we go through the white paper, you'll see how there's a traditional sense of the individuals that are involved within the process. Those middlemen can charge from 3% to as high as 15% in the process. So if a credit card processing fee, by doing this, they are saving merchants plenty of money and excessive fees. Also with Puma Pay, they want to be able to support payment practices that have been difficult to achieve on the blockchain. As I mentioned before, we're normally seeing a push payment. With the pull payment, we can actually allow for recurring payments with fixed and variable amounts, pay per use transactions, restricted, split payments, and more. I'll go through that a little bit later on the website so you can see the different types of scenarios that can actually be made through the pull method, which I think is really interesting and actually really undervalued. I know there's so many high-end platforms out there doing all these great, fantastic things. But when you think about it, if we're moving to a decentralized platform, things like billing are huge, guys. Billing, it takes up a huge percentage of a company's business. Dealing with billing, recurring payments, most traditional processors handle all this information for companies. But if the blockchain is moving to getting traditional services rendered, then having a poll protocol is definitely needed because otherwise they're going to have to work about invoicing, then pushing a payment, pushing a payment, pushing a payment. With the pull protocol, you can actually have all these things set up within the platform already. So with this set in mind, the customer will be able to pre-select and pre-authorize the payments, set specific withdrawal limits, allowing them to have more freedom with the vendor and establish if you go to their YouTube page, there are quite a bit of visualized representation of how it works, the economy for Puma Pay, the holistic ecosystem, how their protocol works. And I definitely recommend you check out these videos because seeing a visual representation of how the money goes from one person to another, from a push protocol to a pull protocol, you will see the difference and how necessary this type of change is needed for the blockchain. Then we go into their mission. So they have four main pillars of what they want to be able to accomplish. Standardizing the payment methods over the blockchain, decentralizing the billing layer by being able to save substantial intermediary costs for the merchants. They also want to be able to increase the use of cryptocurrency 
by allowing this type of functionality will increase it because more people will utilize cryptocurrency if they have the pull protocol available and then they also want to enable powerful launch partners to disrupt their industries by creating a decentralized version of their platform so i'll go into their 40 plus clients that they have and talk about how they're trying to revolutionize certain industries you can download their white paper i am going to highlight only a handful of things mainly their use cases but definitely check out their white paper it is a good read it's very well put it is very very well written and it's really easy to understand it's probably one of the best white papers i've seen in a long time also one thing to note puma pay has released both its version one of its puma pay cryptocurrency wallet in both the google play store and the itunes app store so definitely check it out they do have their first version and this allows for both the pma token which is the puma token and ethereum to be handled and utilized for payment methods so this is just version one i'll go into the roadmap on when they have the availability of other functionality within their wallets so looking at some of the pull contract use cases i will go through this a little bit more in detail in the white paper so they have fixed amount recurring payments so this could be things like your phone bill you have pay per use so things that can actually be done by the minute so this could be from webcam streaming or telephone utilization or things that might be pegged to an actual time frame. They also have a fixed time recurring payment which can be set up for bills, one time single payment. So if you're just traditional shopping, this can be utilized as a standardized payment protocol. It does not have any specific crazy functionality so it can be used for traditional spending. They also have shared payment. So if you need to be able to have a group of individuals such as an affiliate program you can utilize a shared payment platform then there's also a restricted payment which I thought was really interesting which allows for parents or someone a custodian account to be able to own the purchasing rights for other individuals and they need to get authorization for that in the PMA economy here you can see the different groups of individuals that they look on being able to have within their platform their early adopters launch partners the puma pay pride and the third party complementary service providers as of right now they have signed partnerships with more than 40 companies with a combined total of over 10 billion dollars in transactions per year of these 40 companies about 30 plus of the companies are adult entertainment companies such as vivid entertainment they also have other businesses in other industries such as fashion tv so there is a good percentage 75 percent plus in the adult entertainment industry utilizing this type of platform for recurring payments the Puma token acts as a payment mechanism within the protocol and it is based on the ERC-233 standard. As of right now, they are based on the Ethereum blockchain, but as I go through the white paper, you'll see that they are looking at other blockchains for scaling when they do have the need for the platform. Looking at Q2 2018, there's a handful of major milestones which they have hit, which includes the token generation event, the mobile wallet on both Android and Apple the SDK and one thing that they still have left is the integration with I am live which is going to enable purchasing using the PMA tokens so having a first MVP available within Q2 2018 the same as the token generation event would be huge then Q3 they have a handful of items including the updated version of the wallet as I mentioned which will then support recurring payments the updated version of the SDK they also have the pull contract wizard which will allow for companies to create and deploy parameterized pull contracts they also have the Puma pay pride and then the testing of the next gen blockchain and then moving to q4 to q1 this is when they plan to have the third iteration of the wallet which will support pull payment mechanisms the third version of the pull the sdk as well as integration with i am live white label and integration with early adopters so we are not seeing the actual go live of the platform with some of their early adopters till potentially Q1 2019 or end of 2018. So if they keep on track with what they're doing, they will hit an end of year goal, 
obviously with 40 plus companies within their signed contracts i'm sure there's agreements with them to hit certain time frames but it is a big to do to be able to get that many clients live within the platform and i think that's definitely realistic and if they see themselves ahead of the game then q4 2018 it should not be an issue looking at the collaborators you'll see this is most of their earlier adopters and you can see the actual companies that are working with them looking at their team they do have a quite a good group of individuals from the advisors from the blockchain the tech sphere and looking at their core team they do have the ceo yav drawer who has 20 plus years in this type of industry with billing as the main focus there's not much talk about what companies they were it's a little bit of secretive at this point in time potential talks that it could be in the adult industry because he does have a very blocked out linkedin profile so that is obviously everybody should you know do their due diligence but their cto aristos christofides has a huge background in the technology field as well do many of the others and you guys can check out their linkedin profiles some other cool information about the actual ico if you guys are not aware not only was this the biggest ico of 2018 but this is now the sixth largest ico of all time even during their private sale they did so well and made a good amount of money that looking at the token holder list once the available information will be out there we should see that there's going to be quite a small amount of owners of the token so there might be a hot a lot more demand of it because if there's less people generally it's less likely it's going to be out there on exchanges as i mentioned earlier the cryptocurrency wallet is here you can check out their medium page there's a lot of useful information about what the wallet does and the functionality that will be included in future releases the SDK also, as I mentioned, is available as of June 1st, and developers can start looking at this information to build the SDK for the Puma protocol into the businesses and use free of charge. One good piece of information I like to always check out is the GitHub. I did notice that they do have a pretty active GitHub page, so if you go to the proof of concept Puma page, and you will see that they do have quite a bit of commits and branches they only have a handful of contributors as of right now, but I do see some good information coming onto their site. So you can definitely check out their GitHub if you wanna see more information. Going to their white paper, I'm just gonna hit on a handful of items. One is the traditional structure of a payment card transaction. As I mentioned, there's quite a bit of middlemen within the process, so that it can range from three to 15% of that actual money actually going from the consumer all the way to the merchant, but there's also an acquirer, a processor, a card network, and an issuing bank. So these three different areas are going to pull some type of percentage before it actually comes back to the merchants. So you're thinking about the amount of money that is lost during the process and why blockchain is needed and a commission-free process is needed. So here's the technology and kind of how it's going to work within the system. The Puma Pay token has basically on the Ethereum blockchain, there's pull contracts, there's authorizers and limiters. These all depend on the type of transaction that happens. The pull contract is the main smart contract that will actually make the whole process work. This could either be the monthly transaction, the monthly subscription that has a recurring payment. It, it will include the different type of authorizers, so the charge limit, the recipient list, and then there's limiters such as the limited monthly account. So if you are paying for something and you only want X amount of money monthly to go out of your account, that will be a limiter. So there's different pieces and I'll show you this more in the use cases. As I mentioned before, the on-chain functionality for Puma Pay, as of right now, is on the Ethereum blockchain, but they are looking at Orbs, EOS, Credit as potential blockchains for their platform in the future. They are also exploring Stellar and Cardano. They are basically trying to find the best solution to meet the needs of Puma Pay in the long run. They might opt to combine several blockchain solutions, example, one for transactions and the other one for the token. So they might figure out what works best for them in the future. They're not buckled down to Ethereum, which is always a good thing. And looking at the use cases for the platform, 
we have the recurring payments based on time. So here you can have a just they use national cryptographic like it is a monthly catalog. You can have a subscription period that's up to a year. The billing cycle is monthly. What is the payment for that subscription period? And then how are you going to pay? So this is a traditional recurring payment based on time. This is a single payment offline. So if you get a one time check in the mail, whether it's for a bill or it's for a fine, whatever it might be, you can take that and utilize the app to make that single payment offline with the barcode or the QR code instant pay per use so this is an interesting one this is basically a pay per use with has a time limit and a payment method per time which utilizes a state channel off-chain tracking mechanism that will basically do the payments as the time is going by so if you're paying for a service that might actually give technical advice and you're paying by the minute you basically every time you hit a certain time frame you'll make a next payment for that actual phone call or whatever the case might be so basically a p2p state channel is now open between you and the provider and that during the time this specific interval that has been met a payment is then sent over to that provider recurring payments based on time with a variable amount this is where I was talking about the limits earlier so let's just say you have a utility company or a television provider where you don't want X amount of money spent per month going over obviously this will all has to be reviewed but you can put a limit at paying a TV provider $100 per month on your payment so if they accidentally overcharge you you can actually go back look at the payment see why it failed and so forth a lot of people do this with utility companies or certain service providers that they expect X amount of money per month and they don't have to monitor it restricted payment is basically having someone as a custodian for someone else's account let's just use the example as a mother and their son that basically if someone goes to buy a make a purchase the payment method will then get transferred to the mother's account for approval for the payment to actually go through and they have the way of approving and denying payments and these notifications are sent off chain via third party services obviously this information isn't available yet but it is an interesting way of being able to have a custodian account on payment methods for children or for whatever case might be you can even have your your spouse on a restricted payment and they can't spend more than X amount of money per month it's a good way of tracking things and restricting payments as needed especially if you're on a budget shared payments is traditionally used for an affiliate program and this is the best example is if their payment needs to be made you can send X amount of percent to one individual and X amount to another through an affiliate program so what do I think about Poompay? Well, I think that a billing method on the blockchain is definitely something that is needed. It is definitely something that is underrated and it's not something that people would traditionally think about, but that is kind of what I do. I think about projects that are kind of underrated and really make a big use case. There is tech out there that you know might be flashy and stuff like that, but I kind of look at things like this as a little bit more readily available and something that can be realized by a company. If you start talking about credit cards to any major corporation, I'm sure that is a big pain point for them. So utilizing a billing system, recurring payment system, making it as easy as possible, as visible as possible, and I think that is something that people would adopt. It's a type of project that will include a lot more adoption than other platforms because it's understandable, it's simple, but it is, a big big deal when it comes to businesses so I definitely think Puma pay has a huge opportunity right now especially with 117 million dollars raised once it gets hits exchanges we'll see how it does obviously things out of ICO recently have not been doing so well but I hope that Puma pay does well because it really does have some good tech behind it and with 40 plus clients already signed up and wallets being out already SDK being out already, they have proven that they are hitting some deliverables and looking pretty good in their roadmap. So as long as things keep pushing through, definitely something to look forward to in 2018. Obviously, do your own research. It's not financial advice. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell notification for more videos, and have a fantastic day. Thanks again, guys.